Days Gone might be starting to feel like old news now considering it's been out for a while. However, talking about it for me is like taking in a great breath of fresh mountain air tarnished with just a tinge of freshly digested cow lumps. And no, the cow dropping reference isn't because it's bad. It is because the bad in the game is just so good. Let's first talk about what's great in Days Gone. Graphically, there are sections which are simply put stunning. With the sun glaring through tall trees as they sway with the winds during excellent weathering and daytime nighttime cycles. The lighting is one of the best I've ever seen. Don't take my word for it though. Go into one of the many rippers, freaker infested tunnels and check out the muzzle flash or one of the many bonfires scattered around the map which emit a sexy glow to its surroundings and you'll quickly forget about the masses of flesh eating freakers at your six. The fact is that the world Sony Bend have created epitomizes what I envisage a post-apocalyptic world should be. This playground they have crafted is the perfect amount of loneliness, the perfect amount of dangerous and the perfect amount of decay and beauty all rolled up into a bundle of utter yumminess. The fact that developers have managed to get the world right is definitely worthy of praising itself, but then slap on 100 or so freakers on screen at once with a simple, albeit great story, and you've got yourself a game which has been so incredibly underestimated, so devastatingly underrated and so picked on, I have nothing left in me other than to believe there is some sort of animosity in the industry towards Ben Studio and the fact they've been able to pull this game off so much better than many of the bigger boys out there probably would not even fathom. I've got to be honest, I loved every single minute of this 50 hour new IP. That's not to say I've not been hindered in my tracks with a bug here and there, but nothing that would cause me to turn away from wanting more. Yes, of course there are bugs, but in this day and age there are cases so few and far between which produce and ship a solidly created and polished experience I'm dumbfounded as to why this isn't all news to anyone. Cars popping it at the last minute whilst you slam your motorcycle brakes hard to no avail, randomly materialising hordes, yes you heard it right man. Hordes materialising seemingly out of nowhere leaving you without a chance in hell to get out of dodge no matter how trigger happy you are. Houses and furniture not loading properly and impeding movement within barns etc can be a major headache. Tap dancing stuck NPCs, yep, that's reality and NPCs that don't react no matter if you're just sitting idly on your bike or pointing a son off little stubby shotgun at their mugs. The problems are many, but to be fair, not that different from any other releases nowadays, but of course we all expect the AAA studio to have an end product with more polish. Yes, of course we do. However, by no means is this even remotely as game breaking as some have made it out to be. The gameplay is great fun however it's progressive. Therefore at the start the shooting mechanics seem a little jittery, but there is a progression system with skills you can upgrade by performing the usual open world tasks such as threatening missions, killing freakers, gathering their ears and trading them in for camp credits. Pretty much everything you do will gain you XP and these skills will improve Dickens skills vastly which in turn improve the shooting gameplay as well as certain sneaking abilities, thus making the game get progressively better the more you play. However, not the same can be said for the missions, which are mostly based on bounty hunting, fetch requests or clear a camp of marauders or rippers. They get old quite fast. However, the main story missions I personally found engaging and each mission left me wanting to progress the story further. The acting is solid and certain characters really do grow on you and become very likeable. As for Deacon, he isn't immediately likeable by no means, but the guy does grow on you as the story unfolds. The one problem I was frustrated about was that you can't focus on improving your trust level on a specific camp due to the way the missions become available. Therefore, you're left only with being able to increase trust depending on the main story progression. So if you're hoping to focus entirely on increasing Camp Copeland in order to quickly upgrade your motorcycle, you're going to be left wanting. Instead, the game slowly lets you generate trust for three initial camps, mostly evenly. Then the rest is totally up to you later on as the story progresses. As I've mentioned, the story of Days Gone is simple, yet it manages to encompass everything you'd want from a post-apocalyptic story. The danger, the love interest, friendship and camaraderie and, you know, getting people together against all odds. Yes, definitely Hollywood, most definitely cliche, but at least we know it's a formula that will work. Sony Bend, I applaud you. This has been my favourite game this year and I am ready to head back in and wrap up all the collectibles. Fill the hordes with as many bullets as I can carry and clear the roads from all the gunk, urine and shit trails left behind by these fuck... Um, I mean, these freakers. Anyway, I'm hoping there's a sequel in mind. I'm Excessive Gamer, thank you for watching, until next time.